Okay, so you've got an EV quote. We've looked at your board, it's only a few years old, but we let you know we need to change the RCDs. So we're not trying to scam you. We're gonna to explain today why we need to change your current RCDs to type A RCDs. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go through a very basic version of an RCD and an MCB and because obviously this is for our clients and not electricians we are going to keep it simple for anyone that does want to look at something more in depth John Ward has a great great video on all types of RCDs so it'd be worth going over and having a look at his channel for that but let's keep ours basic so let's go through a board first so this is what a traditional board looks like and it has a main switch. It's got two RCDs and six MCBs. There are seven, but we'll stick with six in this one. And what tends to happen, those MCBs pair up with an RCD. So you can see there's three MCBs and then one RCD and then another set of three MCBs and an RCD. So traditionally, that's what boards normally look like, or very similar. So let's have a quick look at the difference between an MCB and an RCD. An MCB is basically short for a mini circuit breaker, so it breaks the circuit. Now, the MCB that is there to basically protect the circuit and the cable. It's not there to stop it giving you an electric shock. So if there's something like an overload, so that might be an extension lead and it's got too many things plugged in, it will cut out the circuit, will protect that. If there's something that we call a short, so you have the live and neutral touch for whatever reason, you've drilled into the wall and you've gone straight through the cable. Anything along those lines, it's there to protect and it will cut the circuit, as it says in the name, and stop the electric flowing. It's also there to prevent fires as well. So it has its role, but what it's not there for is to protect us from electric shocks. So quite often you need an MCB and an RCD. So let's have a look at the RCD now. An RCD, which basically stands for residual current device, its main function is to protect us from an electric shock. And that's the difference between the MCB and the RCD. The RCD is there for us and hopefully to stop us getting an electric shock and potentially it could kill us. So it's very important to have it. Now with an MCB, if you get an overload or an overcurrent, anything along those lines, what tends to happen is you're getting a certain amount of current going through the live cable and say it's 20 amps, but even with an overcurrent, you're through the neutral, the return path, you'll still get 20 amps. So it's, the current tends to stay the same, it's just higher than it's supposed to be. So if it's meant to be 20, it may go up to 40, and then the breaker will trip. An RCD works slightly different. It picks up an imbalance. So if it's meant to have 20 amps going through it, and you touch something that's not supposed to be live, and it gives you an electric shock. What happens is you'll get 18 amps return, for example, because the two amps are down through you, unfortunately. <laughs> what it will do, it will detect that, hold on, we had 20 amps coming in originally, and now we've only got 18 amps returning. So we've leaked current somewhere and it will trip the circuit and stop the flow of electricity. And that's basically how we minimize us getting electric shock because it trips in within milliseconds. So the role of having an RCD and the correct RCD 
is very, very important. Now, it only takes 0.05 of an amp to actually kill us. And these RCDs, they have a tolerance. So they will allow a certain amount of current through. So 30 milliamps is what they'll allow through, and then they'll trip. And that's enough to shock us, but not kill us. So let's have a look at why it's important to have a Type A RCD when you're going to get your EV charger installed instead of a Type AC. AC stands for alternating current and DC stands for direct current. Now the difference becomes, come sorry, is when you're, what appliance you're looking at using. So beforehand, we didn't have a lot of electronics in our everyday use. So washing machine, gaming consoles, uh, your PCs, and so forth. There, you know, today we use a lot of a lot of electronics, and especially your shiny new EV car that you've got parts on the drive worth thousands of pounds. So. AC current normally was fine before when you just didn't have electronics, you just literally had a manual thermostat in your fridge and that's all, that's, you know, you had the current go in there, powered the fridge and that was it, same with your washing machine. But now everything's going digital and getting more digital, there are a lot, lot more electronics and electronics use DC current. Now, what can happen is, let's say there is a fault with your EV or your washing machine, DC current will leak through your AC breaker. So it's basically DC going into an AC system. And what it can do, it can stun the RCD. And if you imagine you're stunned, you can't really move. And it's the same thing with the RCD. So if you've got a Type AC RCD and you get DC current leaking through it, going through it, it may not trip. And obviously, if you're touching something that you're not supposed to be or something that's not supposed to be live, that means you will carry on getting an electric shock. So it's not good, as you can see. And setting that aside, even the electric shock, it's not good for your actual system and other things that are AC. It can damage equipment in the long run. So it's important that we put in a Type A RCD. Even if you're not getting an EV, most things in your household now have got electronics. So we are a bit dated with catching up and Type A's have been around for a long time. But we've only started using them recently because of solar, EV chargers, and so forth. So that's the difference between them. So a Type A will cover DC current, and AC obviously only covers AC. But majority of your household will need a Type A. Also something to consider as well is Type AC current allows you to pull off. So if you're getting an electric shock, you can actually pull off whereas a DC current tries to keep you there as well so you can imagine if you're getting an electric shock and let's stick with EVs because there's a fault with your car or anything along those lines and it's not letting you go because you've got the wrong type of breaker in there so it's not a good scenario to be in so that's the reason we need to make sure that when an EV is installed, even if your board might be new a year or two, that we need to change those RCDs to a Type A to basically protect yourself, your family, from any kind of electric shock. So guys, this is what a AC RCD looks like. So you can see the little line that looks like a wave and this is what a type a rcd looks like so this will cover ac and dc current as well so you've got the wave 
line again and something that I, I suppose you call it they look like two little speed bumps in the road and uh, that's the difference between the two so if you're not sure which one you've got the one with the wavy line on its own is AC the one with the wavy line and the two speed bumps is type A or at least it covers DC color thank you very much for watching hope this answered all your questions and cleared up why type A RCDs are important and I'll see you on the next one.